Greetings and welcome. I'm Dr. Bruce Corey, a professor of economics at Concordia University in St. Paul. And today I want to share with you some of the leaders in this world that I respect and admire a lot and influenced my way of thinking. And these leaders uh, are uh, people that you might be familiar with, and I want to introduce you to them uh, in this short presentation. I want to start off with this famous Brazilian scholar named Paulo Freire. You know, I read his book when I was in grad school and I didn't understand it. Uh, a small little book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And then I read it again when I was doing my doctoral studies and it all clicked. Um, so what did Paulo Freire say based on his reflection? You know, Brazil, it's a, it's a very beautiful, vibrant part of the world, but also of having huge inequalities. And his reflection was that uh, you had a, a system of oppression where one group was oppressing another group. So he called them the oppressor and the oppressed. And a pathway out for both of them to regain their humanity. Because if you want to have true change in society, both groups of people have to be liberated from the chains. The people who have been oppressed, in this case, it could be through systems like race or gender or caste or all these different kinds of, of, of patterns we human beings have devised to dominate somebody else and control them. That has deep psychological and mental impacts on a person. And you might break off your economic chains through revolutionary movements or democratic movements, but you also have to liberate the mind and the soul. And so he talked about that process of liberation for people who have been oppressed, but you can't do it alone. The person or the groups that were doing the oppression or the exploitation had to also be free. And this process of love, of liberating love, is what would ultimately cause the breaking of these chains that would uh, keep people behind. There's more to it and more details uh, in his writing. Uh, that's for another time. The other major influence of uh, is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Uh, she, in the heart of India, would be looking at everything the same thing other people would look but not see, and that is someone dying in the gutter, someone on the street in abject poverty with their last breath. And she would go to them and provide that consoling moment in uh, uh, for that person's life. Uh, and that was her, uh, her mission of love. Uh, um, uh, that that is very powerful and and influenced the whole world and she was even an, awarded a Nobel Prize for her work. Um, these other leaders that I want to talk to you about kind of integrate the ideas or, or show and illustrate the ideas of uh, uh, Paulo Freire and Mother Teresa in the work that they did. So Nelson Mandela, uh, a famous leader from South Africa. Uh, and you might know that in South Africa, there was a very oppressive system of apartheid where, where one group of people, the white um, uh, group, um, systematically oppress uh, the black uh, groups and communities in, in South Africa. And that system was called apartheid because it extended to economic, social, spiritual, all elements of society. And he wanted to overthrow that system um, and that landed him in jail. And he was in jail for decades till something dramatic happened. Because of the conditions of South Africa, 
and the need for some kind of resolution, he was released from prison, something unthinkable. And when he was released, uh, he even came to the United States and you'll see a very classic interview of him if you Google with Ted Koppel. One of the things that, that struck me was when he ultimately from someone in prison became the president and the first black leader of, of, an, of a former apartheid country, um, he wanted to ensure that the progress would be whole and how he could engage with his former oppressors, the white leadership and the white community to work with the black leadership and the black community to have holistic, liberating change in South Africa. The other leader uh, we are all familiar with, with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his attempt uh, to um, bring about a better America and his journey in the civil rights movement uh, the movement of nonviolence, uh, of how we had to change this unjust system, which was rooted in slavery that put the black uh, communities in a, in a intergenerational cycle of poverty and powerlessness, uh, how uh, they had to reclaim their power in themselves and cause change to happen in America. And he led the famous civil rights movement and, and his inspirational journey symbolized in the famous speech, I have a dream of bringing America to a higher plane where everyone would benefit from this new uh, America that had access and opportunity for all and someone who influenced uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was Mahatma Gandhi from India. And he grew up in South Africa originally. He learned about the unjust systems in South Africa and was, was uh, and experienced that. Um, and he came back to India and he went into the rural parts of India because that's where life was and he lived like the ordinary people, he ate like them, he lived like them. And because of them, that he got in touch with the reality of what India was. And in that time, the British Empire uh, was holding sway all over the world. And against this mighty British Empire, how could India get its independence? And so he came up with this strategy of truth force and nonviolent resistance. And he developed strategies that were rooted in the common people. So all over the world, you can see people, the way they come to power is that they find what's worse in people, whether it's, and create hate. And with hate, they capture power. And you can see this happening all over the world as people put one group versus another. Gandhi tried to find something that was not rooted in hate. He, for example, would take salt and he would tell people, you know, you use salt in your food. Why are you accepting the salt that is made from someone else? Come march for with me and we'll go to the sea and we'll make our own salt or why are we wearing clothes that are made by machine we we don't need the mass production we need production by the masses so that everyone can get jobs and get a good standard of living and so rooted in the experience of the ordinary people he came up with these powerful strategies that ultimately caused uh, the British to leave India and India to have independence. So these people uh, have inspired me in this framework I, on my website, empoweringstrategies.org, how 
thinking about their strategies, thinking about uh, how they try to address the, uh, the the important questions of life of of how could be how could we construct a society that works for all and what is the best way to do it? Uh, these five giants in our period of time have offered us some great insight. And it's uh, something that I keep thinking about, uh, especially today uh, in, 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 in a world, uh, not only in America, but we can see playing out in, in Europe, in the Ukraine, and in other parts of the world. Uh, we need to reflect on people like these and find a pathway forward. So thanks for listening. And uh, I hope to hear from your own insights and people that have influenced you too. So till next time, uh, have a great day.